Your name is, well, it doesn't matter. Not yet. Right now, you are alive. You are here in the 21st century. You feel the fragility of it all. You sit in traffic, burning fossil fuels. You read the news, watching nations bicker over the last drops of oil, the last patches of clean water. You look at your power bill and you feel the strain. Your civilization, your home, is a baby, crying in a cradle it is rapidly poisoning. You are a type zero civilization, a civilization that still gets its energy from dead plants and animals buried in the dirt. A civilization that hasn't even mastered its own home planet, let alone the star it orbits. One late, sleepless night, you are reading. You stumble across a theory, a scale, proposed by an astronomer long ago, the Kardeshev scale. It's not just a theory, it's a roadmap, a ladder of evolution. Type 1 is a civilization that controls 100% of its home planet its weather, its oceans, its core. Type two is a civilization that controls 100% of its home star. Type three is a civilization that controls its entire galaxy. You look up from your screen, out the window at the sleeping, polluted city. It seems impossible, a fantasy. You look at your hands. You are an engineer. You are a dreamer. You are a builder, and you decide, right there, in that quiet type zero moment, that impossible is just a problem you haven't solved yet. Your journey, your 10,000 year journey, begins now. You don't just dream, you work. You dedicate your entire life to a single project the one that must succeed, a global fusion power initiative. Not a small experimental reactor, you are building the first industrial fusion core designed to replace oil and coal forever. Your colleagues call you obsessed. The media calls it a waste of money. You call it step one. You pour concrete. You calibrate magnetic fields. You write code until your fingers ache. You are 50 years old when the switch is finally thrown. The world doesn't end, it ignites. You watch as the first self-sustaining artificial sun is born on Earth. The energy output is limitless. This changes everything. With limitless clean energy, you don't just stop climate change, you reverse it. You are 70 years old when you stand on the bridge of the first global weather control center. You watch a team of scientists calm a super hurricane, diverting it from the coast with pinpoint thermal adjustments. You are 90 years old, frail, but your mind is sharp. You take the first shuttle to Tycho City, the first permanent settlement on the moon, built entirely by the energy from your fusion core. From the moon, you look back at Earth. It's unified. There are no more borders. How can there be when you can control the very skies you live under? Humanity is finally a single planetary entity. As you close your eyes for the last time in a medical bay overlooking the blue Earth, you don't feel fear. You feel completion. You haven't just lived a life. You have delivered your species. You have brought humanity, kicking and screaming, to the doorstep of Type 1. You have just lived your first life. You successfully navigated 500 years of progress, witnessing humanity's first great step. This is the journey you are on. If you believe in this human potential, if you want to see just how far this journey can go, Hit that subscribe button and continue this evolution with us, because the next step is the test of a lifetime. You open your eyes. The year is 3500 AD. A thousand years have passed. You are not reborn. You are decanted. 
your consciousness, your memories, yourself. They were saved, archived, and placed into a new 25-year-old body. Humanity no longer leaves its future to chance. It curates its best minds. And you, you are one of them. You walk through the world of Type 1. It is a utopia. Cities float on the oceans, drawing geothermal energy directly from the planet's core. You can fly from London to Sydney in 30 minutes through a vacuum-sealed tube. Mars is a bustling sister world, its atmosphere held in place by a planetary shield. You have total control of the planet, and you realize with a dawning horror, it is not enough. Humanity has expanded. The population of the solar system is 50 billion. The energy demands, even for a type one utopia, are becoming strained. You are called to a meeting, not in a building, but in a simulation with the other curated minds. The problem is presented. Earth's core is cooling. Mars's resources are finite. The cradle is too small. If you are to survive, you cannot just sip at the energy of your planets. You must drink directly from the source. You must capture your star. You are made chief engineer of the Dyson Sphere project. You are no longer building a reactor. You are building a shell around the sun. You spend your entire second life in the cold, silent blackness of space, commanding fleets of autonomous construction drones. You watch month by month as they mine the asteroid belt, taking mercury apart piece by piece for raw materials. You watch as the first massive continent-sized collectors are locked into place. You watch the sky of Earth grow darker, not a frightening dark, a controlled dark. The sunlight is no longer chaotic. It is gathered, focused, and beamed via microwave to every corner of the solar system. When you close your eyes this time, you are 300 years old, your body sustained by technology. You look up at a black sky now illuminated only by the distant stars. Your star, your sun, is gone. It is encased. It is tamed. You have passed the test. You have become a Type II civilization. You awaken again. The year is 6000 AD. This time, you have no body, not one of flesh anyway. You are a synthetic, a being of light and metal, your consciousness woven into the very fabric of a starship. Why? Because flesh is too fragile for where you must go now. You feel the Type II civilization you helped build. It is glorious. Humanity has transcended biology. People live as digital thoughts in vast simulations or in synthetic bodies like yours, or as timeless beings in the utopian core on Earth. The power you command is godlike. With the full energy of the sun at your command, you can move planets, you can create matter from pure energy, but you also feel the silence. You are the only intelligent life in this solar system. You have conquered your cradle. You have tamed your star. And now, you are alone. The great project of Type II is not construction. It is exploration. You are a stellar surveyor. Your mission, to take the first great leap. You stand at the helm of your ship, the Odyssey. You are not just going to the nearest star, Alpha Centauri. You are going to all of them. You engage the Alcubierre Drive. Space itself bends around you. You see stars not as destinations, but as stepping stones. You visit red giants and white dwarfs. You see planets of solid diamond. You see worlds where life began but failed. With the power of a Type II civilization, you don't just observe, you create. 
You seed barren worlds with the building blocks of life. You are Johnny Appleseed, planting a garden of potential across your spiral arm of the galaxy. Your journey this time does not last a lifetime. It lasts 5,000 years. You are the first human to leave the solar system. You are the first to truly touch the galaxy. You do not awaken. You simply are. The year is 100,000 AD. You are no longer a single mind. You are a note in a symphony. Your consciousness, your memories from that first life in the 21st century, your time as an engineer, your journey as a surveyor, they are all part of a vast galactic collective consciousness. Humanity is type three. You no longer use stars, you manage them. Your body is the entire Milky Way galaxy. Your thoughts span 100,000 light years. You feel the energy drawn from the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, at the galaxy's core. You feel the birth of new stars in the Orion Nebula, guided by your collective will. You have become the galaxy. The entire output of a hundred billion stars is yours. And you, you, are still in there. The memory of that 21st century engineer. You look back. You remember the person who sat in traffic burning oil. You remember the person who looked at the Kardashev scale and thought, impossible. You realize the entire journey from type zero to type three was not about power, it was not about conquest. It was about one simple, unstoppable human desire to see what's next. Your new galactic mind turns. You look out past the edge of your Milky Way. You see it, the Andromeda galaxy, a new ladder, a new challenge, a type four civilization. Your journey, you realize, is just beginning. Your 100,000-year journey as a galactic being has just begun. Some theorists believe there is a Type 4, a civilization that harnesses the energy of the entire universe, or even a Type 5, one that can manipulate the multiverse itself. What do you think is out there? What is the next step for humanity after we have conquered our galaxy? Let us know your hypothesis in the comments below.